Today we're making this white oak bedroom bench with a cushion and a sliding door, which is a great addition to a bedroom if you need to sit somewhere, put on some shoes, or if you're someone who pampers their pup, you can have a nice little doggy bed here. And if you're not someone who pampers their pup, you could throw that pup right inside here because this thing will store a lot. It is pretty well sized for storage and for function. So it's a great addition to your bedroom. If you wanna see how I built this, follow along. It's 100% white oak hardwood and um, it has a lot of problems when I made it. I made a lot of mistakes, so you can check out what I did wrong so you don't do those things wrong. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, all that stuff, and here's the video. The first thing I did, besides bringing the wood in here, which you saw, and checking it out for what I needed to see on it, I then took it over to the miter saw and I cut down the lengths that would become the top, the bottom, and the back of this bench build. What's really important then is when you're at the lumber yard to make sure that the length of the wood you buy will satisfy what you ultimately need. And that way you're really efficient with your wood because wood's expensive and you don't wanna be wasting money with a whole bunch of off cuts and things that you don't ultimately want. So here I was able to get my bottom, my top and my back. And I've laid them out here just to not only see how they'll look together, but also just to see how my wood is holding up. One tip that's obvious for most woodworkers, but again, if you're new to this, you might not realize it is just overcut all of your boards by, you know, a half inch or a full inch. And that way, when you get to the final cut, after you've glued everything up, you can make sure that you have enough material on there because nothing's more painful than when you get to that point where you're trying to see if you have the right dimensions and you realize you have to cut a little bit more off than you were expecting and you have to go back to square one and redo all of this work. So a little bit of planning ahead really helps in that ultimate build toward the end, especially once you've done all the milling, which we kind of want to get through so we can get to the really beautiful fun stuff. Once your milling is done, you should be covered in carpenter glitter here, and you should have a whole bunch of pieces that are really beautiful when they come off of the planer and the jointer, and you rip them down at the table saw. I gotta put these boards together, and this takes a little bit of time. You could easily just flush these together and clamp them up and make some really nice panels, but my experience has been then you gotta still run it through the drum sander again, because you're gonna get some very slight differentiations with your pieces. Instead, I prefer to use biscuits or something like a domino, which I happen to have, and then that allows for the alignment to be a lot more precise. When you put in your biscuits or your dominoes, just be careful about how long your pieces are gonna be and that you don't put your domino or your biscuit too close to the edge here. Because when you rip that down on the side of this ultimate panel, you don't want that to get revealed. It's just really frustrating if that happens. So make sure you, that you place them close enough in that the alignment is being aided, but you're not gonna risk running into that on the edge. I also recommend putting down some blue tape, just where the joints are gonna be and that will protect your clamps from any squeeze out from the glue, which you want, but you don't want it on your clamps because that could ruin your clamps. And then as far as glue application, you don't need to go crazy with it. Um, I always, I think, put on too much, but I think it's too much in this case is kind of like ice cream. It's not a problem. I'm ice And then you just find your alignment with the other board. 
I just dump a little bit extra in the tenon joints, even though, again, in this case, that doesn't matter because this isn't for strength. But just a little bit more on the boards. I use my fingers here. They make like special spreaders and everything, but come on. Use your finger, you're in the shop. And then I'll flip this around so you can see this. But you can see how that triangle lines up so that it's then really easy to find exactly where those, in this case, loose tenons are gonna fall. And then what I always do is I just start stacking on my clamps like this. And then I can just lay it down and clamp it up. A lot of people debate the whole domino thing and I don't really get it. I guess it's kind of a cheat, but I think a lot of things are cheats in the woodworking world, unless you're literally hand sawing your boards. You're kind of cheating. So there you go. That's how you make a panel. Uh, I have obviously the longer panels to go here and then another, um, I think that's the, another side. And then I'll have these all batched out, which is good. Um, and then it's just a matter of letting it dry. And then you can actually kind of build stuff. So, you know, it's process, but that's what's fun. One time that I found that's really nice to have a track saw is when you've milled up boards like this into panels and you gotta clean up and square that edge. I always use just a really nice square here. I don't have a ton of woodpecker stuff. It's really expensive, but this I use a lot. This one, it's the TS24 because when I make panels like this, I trust it to be really square, which is the point of a square in case you didn't know. So I finished ripping the bevel on the edges here, these 45s, so that all these panels can go together. And I spared you from the footage of that just because it's pretty simple. You set your blade to 45 and you rip. The biggest thing is trying to make sure that these will align and I'll be using some dominoes to help with that. And in case it's not obvious, this is me marking out those dominoes. before then using the domino to run in those loose tenons. And what I realize here shortly is I missed one of them on this side here and I need to refit it. So my thought was that I could just use the domino right against that kind of hanging top, but then I got wiser and said, this doesn't make sense. And then it all fell apart. see this but this is a mistake when you have a chamfer bit and I'm going along and when you get to the edge here because there's the miter already in there it slipped over the edge and chunked out this these things happen um, it's a bummer but it'll still look just fine I think so here I'm marking these stop dados for the top that will slide into the sides in the back one of the things that I came across is when you make a stop dado on a table saw with a dado stack, you end up with kind of a curved uh, shape. And so using the jointer on the top, I was able to find a shape that would kind of match that. So I don't give more detail here, but it worked out really well. So sliding doors are pretty easy. The key thing is with the rails, with the grooves that the door actually runs in, that you have a shallower lower 
run and then a deeper upper run. So what I usually go for there is one eighth inch on the bottom and three eighths inch on the top. That way you can just pop the door up and it drops down and it will slide within that track really smoothly. So I have my top here, not here, my top and then my bottom. And I've measured back about three quarter inches to have a little bit of a reveal for the door. And then I'm just gonna run that over this dado stack and that way it should run really smoothly within that opening. Other key thing to make sure you've done is make sure your cabinet is square. If it's not square, the door just really won't work. There's not a way to fix that. So double, triple check that it's square and that will work out pretty well. So remember that piece I jacked up right here where I routed too far and it slipped over. This is the result of that. I ripped off the top, so what was beveled before. And I'm just gonna use a new piece. And one of the benefits, of course, of real wood is that I can just slap this thing on the top here and it's all white oak, so it's going to look just fine. Now, I'm gonna have to still match the angle and redo the bevel and everything, but that's really not a big deal since I can just glue this on, slap it up there once I cut that, and I can basically go right back to work. So I'll show you what it looks like at the end and hopefully you'll agree that it looks fine, but we'll see. I don't have a lathe I used these hole saws to create two inch deep holes that I was then able to take over to the band saw and rip them down and I could knock out what would become two inch feet it was way easier than finding white oak feet somewhere else and obviously way cheaper and it worked out just fine unlike this <laughs> I then used a Forstner bed just to route out a small impression there so I could use a flathead screw to attach the feet onto the bottom of the cabinet and it works well because that way your screws won't hit the carpet or hardwood floor. They'll be flush inside that foot and it won't have any issues with scratching or catching on any carpet. Thanks for watching that wraps up this build if you have any questions on how to make sliding doors check out my video linked right here or if you're interested in my other builds check out any of those other videos that are probably popping up around me thanks for watching again if you can subscribe like all that stuff that's wonderful have a great day